Welcome back to another episode of In The Garage. I'm Kyle Smith and we are here in my home garage showing you guys how to do projects with basic hand tools and just a little bit of know-how. Today's episode is all about timing and specifically timing on this 1930 Ford Model A that I've been trying to get running right. We've rebuilt the front suspension. You guys have watched that over the last couple episodes. Got everything to where it will drive nice but it doesn't have the power that it should. And that means something is off here in the engine. Now there's of course two types of timing when it comes to engines. And the first is valve timing, the second being ignition timing. I know the valve timing on this engine is correct because it ran good last fall. I know the ignition timing is off because I adjusted it last fall and it ran worse after that. So now I have to correct my mistake. And on this little 200 cubic inch Model A four cylinder, it's pretty easy to see the distributor, but you don't actually adjust it in the same way as a more modern engine. And when I say more modern, I'm talking 50s and 60s small blocks. If you want to see how that is done, I actually did a DIY video for Haggerty a couple years ago, and we'll put a link either in the description or somewhere in this video where you can go and watch that one. This process is a little bit more involved. So let's take a look at what we're going to have to do to actually iron it out. Now the key to any ignition system is the distributor right here. And so this one you can see inside nice and easily. And there is the rotor, which is taking the energy from the coil and dispersing it out through this little tab. And then you can see the four points on the cap that correspond to each of the spark plugs. So this is actually the number one cylinder runs along outside here, number two, three, so on and so forth. So it's a pretty simple thing. And uh, with removing these wires, I can actually pop the body off and show you a little bit more. So what we're actually going to be adjusting is this cam right here. On any kind of modern-ish distributor, you'd actually adjust the entire body of the distributor rather than just this cam. Uh, but on the Model A's, it's a little bit different. So what I'm gonna have to do is loosen that up, get everything adjusted properly, and then uh, tighten it down. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So with Model A's, you actually wanna make sure that you are on number one cylinder, top dead center of the compression stroke to make sure you're timed properly. And to do that, you use this pin here on the front of the engine. So what you do with this pin is you loosen it, get it out of the way, and it threads in a little bit. But what you do is use that tip of the pin and you'll actually hold that in as I rotate it by hand. And there is a dimple in the timing gear that this is going to fall into. And that's how you will know you are on top dead center of the intake stroke. So let's set up a tripod here and I'll rotate the engine using the hand crank here on the front. And I will spin that over by hand and hopefully I will be able to capture that pin falling into that dimple. So I'm just gonna slowly spin the engine over. The nice part is these engines don't have a ton of compression so you can usually spin them over by hand pretty easily. And I'm going to use the distributor as a reference to know when I'm coming up close to it. Actually, there it is. So we probably barely saw it, if at all. But I can kind of use the fan so you can see it moving in and out there. So now I know we're at top dead center. Pull that pin, thread it back. Make sure to not move the engine now. All right, now that I've got the motor at top dead center on the number one cylinder, what I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and remove our spark plug wires. And I'm just working the front of the engine here. Wanna make sure not to damage those. And pop our distributor cap off, lay that out of the way. Then I will remove the body and the rotor. So here you're able to see the points plate and let me actually move 
So you guys can see what the timing looks like. So this is with the timing in the starting position, which would be uh, fully opposite of advanced or with the timing retarded. And then if I go to full advanced, you can see how that moves the timing plate or the points plate, so how that's gonna work with the manually adjustable timing of the Model A. So I'm just using a standard wide flat blade screwdriver to loosen this top nut ever so slightly. Put the rotor back on, actually give that a little bit of a turn so that it's opposite, which is just taking out some of the lash in the system. Then I set up our timing light system. So I've got a standard test light and then just a little clip on lead that makes this a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna lay that there where I can see it from inside the car will be handy. So right there, one side clips to the breaker arm of the points plate and the other side is just a ground. So that should make a circuit when the points are closed. There we go. So what I'm looking for here is right when the points open, you'll see that my test light lights up. So I spin that around. You can see the points opening for each cylinder. Now, as I'm working on this, one of the key things that I'm remembering and that you should always remember, especially when working on vintage vehicles, is that a lot of these items have wear and slop that is just in there. And so adjusting all new parts is going to be radically different than adjusting something like this. I'm going to get it as close as I can, but I probably won't be able to time it super accurately. I'm referencing a manual, I'm getting everything in place, but I'm still just going to be able to do the best I can and the car is probably still going to run better regardless. And a key thing to remember as I'm adjusting this is that I'm only turning the distributor rotor clockwise direction. And there's a key reason for that. And that is because there is gonna be a lot of slop in the drive. There's a lot of wear. Probably most of these parts are 90 years old. And by rotating clockwise, I'm going against the direction that it normally travels, which doesn't make sense at first, except that I am pushing to where there is no slop. So whatever adjustment I put on there, as it's being pushed the opposite direction, that's going to be nice and tight against it. Whereas if I go even just a little bit counterclockwise, it might feel perfect. I can lock down that cam, but then it's going to rotate back just a little bit um, as soon as the engine starts and pushes on it the way that it should. So here I've got everything set back up again. So I've got my test lamp connected to the breaker points and I have the rotor in place so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So again, I wanna rotate. Uh, so this is fully timing retarded. Um, so I wanna make sure that it's all the way over here so you can see with just a little bit of movement in the counterclockwise direction, those points are opening up and then I'll go back just a hair. There's the slop out of it and that catches. So what I should be able to do is lock this down very carefully. And then if I move the timing lever on the wheel, and you can see it actually opens up the points and gives full advance to that timing. So you can see, even with that cam locked down, that's how much play is in this distributor, which is pretty crazy. You can see here I've got everything lined up appropriately. So I want to tighten it in a way that it takes very little movement. Yeah, that's not enough. There, I finally got it tightened down. There's a lot of slop. You can see all of that is with it tightened down. 
So I've got that set just right where I want it. I will go ahead and disconnect my test light. And I'll actually put the distributor body back on here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I've got the distributor body back on. And you can see where it's falling relative to our number one post. That is just barely lining up. So it's going to be, that spark's going to be hitting just at top dead center, maybe just even a little bit past, which is going to be just right for starting because we only use that uh, fully retarded spark for starting and then we'll put it to full advance. So let's put everything back together. I went ahead and already moved the timing pin. And let's see how it runs. And this entire process is not something that I dreamed up. This is all from Les Andrews' Model A book and it is outlined in photos and it's all super important, but it's also a little bit by feel and by intuition on the car. If I go exactly letter by letter for the process that he spelled out, uh, the car doesn't run right. And so I've had to adjust just a little bit and I'm advancing it a little bit further than what this book says. And it should run significantly better because that's been the problem. The spark has been too late entering the cylinder. I don't have enough power. It actually won't run right. So I'm going just a little bit more advanced than what he is prescribing in here. And I think we're gonna have some better luck. Let's give it a try. All right, that wraps up the timing project on the Model A. It's running a good bit better. It still has the exhaust leak. It still has a bunch of work that needs to be done. But the big thing about this is showing that just one project at a time, spending a few minutes working on something can make big progress on a project like this. Now, I also wanted to introduce and invite you guys to comment on something. I have this 1965 Corvair engine it's been sitting over in the corner just collecting dust for over three years, actually. And I don't know much about it. It came with a car that I purchased three years ago. And I want to know what you guys want to see me do with it. Do you want to see it run? Do you want to see me blow it up with dynamite? Do you just want to see it taken apart and talk about each piece that comes out and how it interacts with the larger system? Whatever it may be, we're going to look into it and see what we can do. But we want to make this show what you want to see. So leave a comment down below of what I should do with this engine and I'll see you next week.